So in the last video, we had a look at recording a passage and basically doing some basic work to start to develop our voiceover signal chain. So right now we're sitting at a pretty good spot. We've got some corrective EQ, a little bit of sizzle, we've added a little bit of compression. Now the next two things I wanna look at over here are noise reduction and a de -esser. Okay, so let's talk noise reduction for a second. Do you absolutely need it? No. Does it come in handy? Yes, it does. There's a lot of great noise reduction plugins out there. Now some of my personal favorites happen to be the Isotope RX Dialog Denoiser, and another one that I use is the Accusonus Era D. Now for this particular demonstration, this is the noise reduction plugin that I'm gonna be using. And I'm actually gonna put this noise reduction plugin on the source track. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna enter my search field, and I'm gonna put ERA, and you can see here that it's gonna bring up Era D for me. And the reason I like this noise reduction plugin is because it's so simple to use. All I have to do is click the adapt button over here. Channel types discussed below, including input, output, bus, and effects channels. And that's it. Instead, instrument channels represent the audio output of virtual instruments. There are several other channel types discussed below, including input, output, bus, and effects channels. Now, this is another reason that I like to work with a bus, is because I can have multiple different tracks and they could have different noise profiles, so I could do some basic noise reduction on the source tracks and then just route them to the VO bus and kind of stabilize the level so that they're all hitting the VO bus at the same level. So now at this point, I'm basically looking to do some de -essing. Now, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be using the stock compressor in Studio One to create a de -esser. And that's something that you can find in my Studio One Dynamics and Compressors Explained. I have a video that goes over that specific workflow. So I'm just gonna be borrowing that same workflow and I'm gonna be bringing it into the signal chain. And I'm pretty sure if I go over here that I can have, there we go, a male de -esser. So this is using the sidechain filters of this compressor that's just gonna affect the frequencies that I wanna compress on the high end. So if things get a little too sizzly, or a little too sibilant, or a little too harsh, it's gonna take care of that. Now, with these settings, this should be pretty good, and all I should have to do is adjust this threshold. Let's go ahead and push start. Instead, instrument channels represent the audio output of virtual instruments. There are several other channel types discussed below, and if we wanna hear what we're listening to, we can listen to that filter. I can even open this up a little bit more. Instead, instrument channels represent the audio output of virtual instruments. There are several other channel types discussed below, including input, output, bus, and effects channels. Instead, okay, so now we're sitting at a pretty good spot. All right, so let's say that we're happy with this. And you know what? I'm gonna go over one thing before we move on, is that, you know what, you might say, Marcus, this is great, but I don't have a noise reduction plugin. Well, let's take a look at a couple other different things that we can do. First of all, one thing that I would always recommend people do, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close down the console for a second. Let's back up to the beginning here, and I'm gonna go ahead and activate this track. I'm gonna go into record mode here, and now I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hold my breath, and I'm gonna record some silent tone for just around 15 to 30 seconds, and we'll talk about why in a second. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, and I'm gonna go ahead and push record. Before I do that, let me just mute this track, and I'm gonna hold my breath. Okie dokes, there we go. We have what we call room tone. Now I know that I let out a breath at the very end here, so I'll just back that up, come out of record mode here. So now I have this room tone, and what this will serve to do is if I need to fill in any gaps, or if there's any shuffling, or any mouth noises, or any shuffling, or a chair squeaking, that I have this blank slate that I can use to fill that in. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to come back to that but I'm gonna open up the console now, and we're gonna have a look at a slightly different approach we can take to using a denoiser. So on this one over here, I'm gonna deactivate the denoiser, and in fact, we'll deactivate the VU meter as well, because we don't need that anymore. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'll do this probably at the very last stage, is I'm gonna go ahead, 
And I want to use the expander. So let's type in EX and you can see that we've got the expander here. Now these default settings happen to work really, really good. So let's go to the beginning of this loop section over here. And I'm going to go ahead and press play. And watch what happens in between these sections here. In fact, I'll extend this loop range out a little bit more so that it's covering over that silence. Let's play from one of these loop points over here, go to the beginning, and I'm gonna unmute the track here, and now let's go ahead and play. Instead, instrument channels represent the audio output of virtual instruments. There are several other channel types discussed below, including input, output, bus, and effects channels. So you see what's happening here is this expander is basically closing off the audio signal when I'm not talking. Now, this happens to be working really, really well. And I just happen to know that bringing this up in its default position works really well if I track with my same levels at the zero VU mark all the time. And I always try to train myself to dynamically speak as equally and as consistent as I can. And that's going to really help with an expander. So if you can train yourself to speak like this and talk like this, then the expander is gonna work great because you'll be able to very quickly just set a threshold over here. Instead, instrument channels represent the audio output of virtual instruments. There are several other channel types discussed below, including input, output, bus, and effects channels. And that will completely close off the signal. Now, is the noise still there? Yes, and when you're talking, you can hear the noise, but the whole idea here is that if you have a good signal to noise ratio, that the noise should be masked by your voice. So that in between the phrases, it's based on these attack and release settings, this expander is closing and opening, like a gate, but more softer, so that we can actually cancel out some of the noise. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna leave this expander in my template. Now, now that I'm happy with this, I'm gonna go ahead here, and we can actually go ahead and save this as a session template. Now, a caveat to this is we can include audio in our session templates as well. And that's where this room tone that we recorded is really gonna come in handy. So now what I can do is go ahead, I'm gonna go file, save, just to back up this particular session. And now I can go to save as template. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've done this work already where we've basically said, all right, this is a decent recording level. And this voiceover chain happens to work very well for the program material I'm working with. So now we can just basically go ahead and we can create that template. I can choose an icon, I can select an image, I can give it a name, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK. So now it's gone ahead and it saved this template. So now if I was to go ahead right now and create a brand new session, I could do a Command N, I could choose now this exact same template over here and let's just go ahead and put this on my desktop just for argument's sake and do this really quickly. And you can see that it's brought this up as a starting point. Now, what I would have done to do this properly is to have deleted at least this audio and removed it from the session before I created that template. And then I'd have my room tone as well. And that's what we're going to get into in the next video is some of the editing workflows.